I've always wanted to be in a band, but I can't sing or play any instruments. I'd be one heck of a band manager, though. <laughs> what is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. The Boys in the Band is the new movie on Netflix. We're going to talk about it non-spoilery, of course. I need you in the comments down below. Were you excited for this film? Are you a fan of Ryan Murphy, who once again is involved with the project on Netflix? Let's do it. So at a birthday party in 1968 New York, a surprise guest in a drunken game leaves seven gay friends reckoning with unspoken feelings and buried truths. It's the way I'll describe this movie. Has anybody ever been like so drunk they're just willing to do anything or say anything to anyone? Or have you ever been to a party like this where you kind of sit back and you start opening up to other friends. They aren't even the best of friends. Sometimes you just have to sit and talk about how you feel. And that really is the majority of this movie. Now, this is based on a film, uh, a remake of sorts of a 1970s movie, which is based on a play from 1968. Now, the play is beloved. The movie, I think, has really good reviews. I've never seen either. So this is really my first experience with this material, source material of sorts. Um, but from what I saw within this film, it has a lot of really great things to offer. Filmmaking wise, I think it's made very well. I think it's edited together well. Uh, but for the most part, we're in one location. It all comes down to the dialogue. How good is the dialogue? But even more importantly, how good are the performers delivering that dialogue? And I want to start with Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons is a guy who has really impressed me for a long time, but I've, I've always wanted that movie role where he can just let loose, let go, and give an outrageously outstanding performance. And that's what I think he does here. And this film basically rides on the performances his not his alone, but his for the most part, and he crushes every ounce of screen time. There's one emotional scene with him towards the end that was heartbreaking because the guy is just so good. Now, he's not the only one that steals the show. Robin Day Jesus, who I don't know a lot about, plays Emery. He is really good. Matt Bomer is awesome. The one that I was looking forward to, though, when he finally shows up, Zachary Quinto, I'm like, okay, how is he going to be in this movie? Is he going to uh, kind of take our attention away from these other characters, which were already kind of established in the beginning? But no, no, no. When he shows up, he makes an immediate impact, and he steals all of the screen time away from these other characters, and he just soaks up every moment, and it is really impressive to watch. I've been wanting Quinto, same with Parsons, in a role like this for a long time, and he steals every moment. Now, this movie is interesting because you have all of these friends who are trying to kind of um, hide the way that they are from other individuals, so this is their opportunity to kind of come together and be who they feel they should be, but you have this one guy who shows up and kind of throws off the entire party because while we have these seven gay men, we also have this one individual who is um, just kind of unaware of what he's getting himself into at first. And it turns out he's not the biggest fan of the way that they carry themselves. So that creates conflict. That creates drama. And, and what this movie kind of um, hangs its hat on is the fact that it balances that drama so well with the comedy with just the fact that it lives and dies by the conversations. Now, I will say the entire movie uh, didn't keep me enthralled because there were points where I was just kind of waiting on the next thing to happen. It does slow down, and you're going to get that with the dialogue-driven movie. It's can the film keep me captivated from beginning to end, and it didn't quite keep me captivated all throughout. I think I needed a bit more in certain moments, and the film does actually kind of feel like a play at points, whereas it wasn't as maybe cinematic as it intended. Now, that could be because we're watching it on Netflix and not in a theater, but I honestly believe they could have done a few more things to make this feel like more of an experience when it comes to a movie instead of a play. We saw a very similar thing a couple of years ago with Fences, uh, and I enjoyed that film as well, but sometimes these movies just come out that are based on plays, and they kind of feel like plays, but again, you're going to get that with the film that takes place in one location. It's hard to stray away from that, so I don't really fault the filmmakers so much. Speaking of the filmmakers, we've already talked about Ryan Murphy, who's a producer on this film, but Joe Mantello is the director who I think does a fantastic job of getting every performance that he can out of these actors, allow the chemistry to be there, um, because you have chemistry between the group, but one of the things that they do uh, in this party, and that's when I think the movie started to pick up for me, because prior to that, I was enjoying 
enjoying the characters themselves, but I'm like, okay, what's the goal of the movie? What's the mission? I know we have this guy who kind of walked in on this, so how is that going to play into the third act? And then we realize what they're doing, and Parsons' character creates this game where each of them have to call someone whom they have had feelings for in the past and admit those feelings. That's when the film started to pick up for me. Prior to that, it was enjoyable, and I was enjoying the performances, but um, the point wasn't really being driven home in the first act. As you get through the second act, and once you start getting into the third, that's when I sat back and said, okay, we're really seeing how each of these individuals feel, and, and that's what the characters felt like to me. They felt like individuals, each of them having their own very distinct personality from Michael to Harold to Donald to Alan, who is kind of the character at first that nobody's supposed to like, but even he has something deep down that they slowly start to um, uh, get from him towards the end. I'm trying not to spoil anything, but uh, overall, I think The Boys and the Band is a good movie. I think I needed a bit more in parts to kind of separate itself from being a play, uh, and maybe those moments that slowed down to a point did slightly affect my final verdict, but if you're looking for great performance, Look no further than Quinto, of course, but again, Parsons just destroys it in this movie. He is so good. So as for my score, first off, if you guys enjoy this review, you like talking Netflix every single week, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and uh, check out the channel. Become a subscriber if you guys would like. I'm going to go, man, I can't believe I'm doing this two videos in a row. A 72%. It's the year of the sixes and sevens, like I said. And I hate to give the same score because I just reviewed the American Murder documentary. But you know what? 72, a solid score for what I believe to be a solid movie on Netflix. I need your thoughts down below. How'd you feel about the film on a performance level? And let me know what you are watching on Netflix this weekend. Appreciate it. See you soon.